I don't really want to leave this world without having taught anyone the love of Christ and having yeah. them come to know that same love that I had yeah. or have. And I want people to experience that. Because Granted, I, that's the passion again. That's okay, the sure, back to sure. the passion. But how has being an evangelist helped you to grow as a Christian? It's just that many of the, the so-called Christians that have become Muslims, when you talk to them, they've never darkened the door of a church. True. And and so why are they being why are they being trumped as Christian converts to um, Islam if they've never even been to a fellowship? So, brother, um, we well, just off camera we were talking briefly about this idea that you've you've been watching our videos, you felt inspired by what you're seeing, and you you, you felt called to kind of do the same. And then I asked you about, you know, how would you test that calling? And um, what I, I thought we could do for the benefit of everyone that watches is just do a, a quick meditation in real time. Sure. You know, because the, to, the question of vocation or calling is like absolutely essential to Christian spirituality, as you know. Yeah. It's something that, that's very central to how we live out our Christian faith and, and how we live out our walk with our Lord. Yeah. And so, and, and lots of Christians talk about calling, they talk about vocation, but not lots of Christians are particularly well taught about how you test your vocation. Yep. So you talked about, I, I, I've got a calling maybe to do the same yep. as what you see me do, you know? Um, and so I want to, I want to, hopefully that was, yeah, hopefully that was a seed and not, <laughs> not a bird. Um, but like the, uh, I, want to, I want to talk through with you a meditation to see if you've got the same calling as me. So the first thing that you need to check and, and to understand about your calling is do you have a passion to do it? So when you see me do what I do on camera, do you have a passion to do the same here in this park? Yeah. yeah you do? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, like... Um, if you talk to the camera, talk talk to the microphone. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, when I watch you do what you do, I very passionate about that. Like that to me seems like, ah, I'm called to do that. I've always been the kind of person who, who debates and talks with others and then kind of has the, the patience to do that. Yeah. And I think what you do is probably requires a lot of patience from you as well. Yeah. And watching it, like I'll immediately, I, I go look at scripture, I look at the references, I, I, I actually invest time in it. Yeah. Last night I spent hours, like, um, it was actually an Islamic uh, channel that uh, interviewed a guy who I saw here a few weeks ago. Yeah. And I'm asking, I can't, I can't remember his name. Uh, have some, have some. Hamza? I think that's it, yeah, yeah. Ginger hair? No, 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 not that guy, a different guy. Right. Uh, I can't remember. Anyway, go on. But anyway, he, and he was asking me his questions. He was saying, uh, like, uh, what was it? In Mark, uh, in Mark 7, um, it talks about how Jesus uh, calls a, a pagan lady a, a dog. Yeah. And he was grilling him on that, and I thought, I need to know this stuff. So I spent all these hours reading into this, and I looked at, like, uh, popular theologians that I listened to and looked at their views, and, and I just did that just because I just wanted to, and it was, it was, I was inspired to to know this because I feel a calling to defend it and to and to call people to Christ basically. And okay, so yeah, the passion is definitely yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And, and what tells me that that passion is there is a you're doing it already, and b you are investing in time in doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are two clear indicators that you've got the passion. The next thing is. Um, do you have the skill to do it? So that question. when you do it, you're actually effective. effective. Yeah. Are you someone who says, right, I'm going to evangelize, and then the moment someone throws out a question, you're totally stumped, even on the easy ones, you know? Do you have the, do you have the skill to do this kind of evangelism? So, I don't know, this is, this, this is probably the sort of gray area, because I know quite a bit, I think, yep. but at the same time, there are things that I simply wouldn't have heard before that will throw me out. Yep. There are things that I know the answer to and I've heard the answer to, and I've been personally satisfied with that answer, but I can't phrase that at the time in a way that would be convincing to others. Yeah. So I basically have to plead humility and say, look, I actually don't know the answer to it. Yeah. I, I, can't, I can't give a defense for that specific claim at this time. Do you find yourself doing, and that actually is the, a responsible attitude, is not to give answers unless you're certain of the answers that you're given. You know, um, and 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 that so that's a really good spiritual maturity yeah. to do that as an apologist. So my actual biggest fear yeah. is actually not really being wrong. It's not actually making uh, uh, you know I look stupid in, ca in camera or to Muslims or anything like that. Yeah. My biggest fear is that I commit heresy. My biggest fear is that I speak things that are not true. Yeah, that's what worries me. So let, let, let me just address that by by saying that heresy is 
And, and, and you're right to have an attitude that says I'm slow to speak. It's better to be slower to speak than it is to, to teach something that's false. So, you know, you've got to have good reasons for the answers that you give. But th there are ways you can qualify your answer. You can say like, you know, this is where I'm at at the moment. This is my understanding at the moment. But obviously, when, you, when you're an apologist, you, you have to sort of, you, you've got to be able to give answers that confirm truth into people's hearts, solidity. And so if you sound unsure yourself, yeah. then you're not, not going to be necessarily communicating that confidence to the person you're talking to. Yeah. And, and, and the ability to not just give good answers, but to give answers that instill confidence in people yeah. is a key element of, of what it means to be. So you've got to have the passion, you've got to have the ability, the, you've, got to, um, you've got to have the opportunity. So do you find in your life that you're having opportunity to evangelize and to share the faith? Um, yeah. So historically, uh, I've been a Christian for over 10 years now. Yeah. But, uh, I think I took theology as a serious study a few years ago. Okay. And that's when I actually got really passionate about it. And since then, I've always been interested in, in this kind of dialogue. Not just to win over arguments, but also to win over people. So I think that's the, the key goal. Yeah. So for me, um, I, th I guess one of the things I'm good at is I can be patient. Yeah. I can have a one-on-one -on -one with someone and I can be patient enough yeah. that I can sort of plant seeds, I think, or at least I yeah. hope I can do. Do you have the confidence to talk in front of crowds? That's the question. That's okay. question. I think I probably can. So I was here a few weeks ago and I think I, I actually did. I got in a chat with Mansour. Right. And I think I did okay. -ish. Yeah. But again, I wasn't aware of the things he was going to bring up. I, 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 I've heard a lot of what he said before, but at that time I wasn't expecting that kind of conversation. So when yeah. I came into it, I, I could have done better if I had prepared beforehand. Yeah. I think, I think that, I think, I honestly want to encourage Christians not to engage any of the Dawa team. Right, right. Unless, unless there is a, unless there's a Christian camera present. Okay. And if I could send out any message to the people that are watching this, is don't engage with the Dawa team unless they agree to have a Christian camera present. Because the, 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 the Dawa team are just looking for fodder. Yeah. They're yeah, not yeah, looking yeah. for intelligent conversation. Yeah. They're not looking for knowledgeable conversation. They're not even looking for real debate. Mm. They're just looking for fodder so they can practice their script, the new argument that they've learned, in the hope that they can get a Christian on camera that doesn't know what they're talking about. And that's why the Dawa team uh, basically avoid all of the, yeah. you know, the, 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 the knowledgeable Christians in yeah. the corner. Yeah, they're looking for those easy prey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so, like, I would encourage you to refuse to debate with the Dawa team unless they are willing to have a Christian camera yeah. present. I see, I see. So the, 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 the other thing that you need, so we talked about you've got the passion for it, um, that you've got the, um, the ability to do it, the opportunity to do it. The, the fourth one is whether the scriptures agree with what you think your calling is. Now, in this case, we can say that's a yes. Because we, we know immediately that there's nothing wrong with evangelism. There's nothing wrong with evangelizing in public spaces. There's nothing wrong with evangelizing through social media. So that one's a green light. The, the fifth thing to consider is that in doing it, do you become a better Christian? I think so. I think I, think I, I would be. Uh, so I tell think, me how evangelism has helped you grow in your spirituality. So for me, something that I always long to do is I don't really want to leave this world without having taught anyone the love of Christ and have yeah. them come to know that same love that I had, yeah. have. And I want people to experience that. Because Granted, I, that's the passion again. That's okay, the back sure, to the passion. Sure. But how has being an evangelist helped you to grow as a Christian in your internal spirituality? I think part of it is the engaging of people yeah. and hearing them and coming to understand that actually there are difficulties that they have that I can at least pray for and try to understand. Yeah. And in my own life that would, that would affect how I pray and how I think of others. But I don't know, I guess that's a difficult question to answer. Do you want to take a step closer? Because I'm just Sorry, conscious yeah, yeah. of all the, the noise that we've got coming sure, from sure. over there. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Um, it will present me with challenges that yeah. will cause me to reflect. I've been in there times before That's where... That's what I'm wanting to hear. Well, okay, yeah. yeah. So I've been times in my life when my faith has been pushed. And it's been pushed quite... Well, I felt the... I guess you could call it the the, uh, the earthquake of, of unbelief that 
feels to shatter your whole foundations. Yeah. And then you have to reground yourself and think, hang on a second, let me go look at this, let me go research this. Yeah. And then you come out better and stronger because of it. Yeah. And I think that's a, an essential learning part of what it means to, to evangelize and to, and to preach. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and one of the, you know, like in, in my own faith, doing this kind of evangelism puts kind of pressure on me to, to stay away from sin. Do you know, it, it, it's kind of, it actually creates a positive peer pressure for me to try and stay away from sin. And so that, that's one of the key questions that, that your evangelism, if it is your calling, is going to actually make you a better disciple of Jesus. You know, and, and you've talked about that in the sense it causes you to reflect, yeah. causes you to regather yourself. It's a form of accountability, I guess, because if you're in the position where you're actually preaching the gospel to others, yeah, you know, take the plank out of your own eye before you take the, the, the plank away out of others. So yeah. there are things in which you you're forced to look at yourself inwardly before you look at others outwardly. And yeah, I think, yeah, it seems yeah. Like accountability to me is kind of how I see that. Yeah, de de definitely. I mean, I'm just saying how it how it helps me in my walking faith. You, you don't need to copy, no one needs to copy one another. Like, you've got your journey with Jesus, I've got my journey with Jesus. So, but, but what I'm saying is, however following your vocation affects your discipleship, the thing is it should affect your discipleship for the better. Right, okay. Because if following a vocation makes you a worse person, then it isn't your vocation. I see. Now, the other thing is, what are, what are the, you know, the people that love your soul, love your walk with the Lord, your spiritual elders, what are they saying about your evangelism? Uh, they're supportive of it, but they also know about things that happen here, and they're actually kind of worried about me. Right. They basically say, be careful. And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I'm all yeah. good. Don't, yeah. don't worry about this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they're encouraging it. Yeah. Yeah. So what, 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 the reason why I ask that question is because what our spiritual elders, what our, our fathers of confession, our mothers of confession are saying to us, those who lo love our walk in the Lord, and care about our journey with Jesus, if they're telling us not to do something, mm. that's probably a sign that we should be cautious about whether to do it or not. Right, right. Yeah. You know, if you're saying, I want to be a pastor, mm -hmm. and everyone who loves your soul is saying, I don't actually think that that's, that's a great that's idea, yeah, yeah. You, should, you should listen to that. Mm. Doesn't mean you do exactly what they tell you, but it means that you take into your own reflections and consideration what they're saying. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the final reflection that I would offer you is those that don't like your walk with Jesus, those that don't want you to grow in the Lord, I mean, if you've got people like that in your life, what are they telling you? Uh, yeah, not, 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 well, they, they see it strange and odd more than anything else. They, they see it strange and odd, okay, yeah. yeah. They, 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 they tend to be people who are quite like-minded like me, so I'm quite analytical in thinking. Yeah. So they would be similar and they would approach me and they would argue with me. Right. Um, which is fine. But what are they saying about you being an evangelist? They don't quite get why. Okay. It's, it's so, more sort of like, well, if you want to do that, don't, don't get why, but you're not going to be one of those crazy people that yell and scream, are you? Do you, um, do you, in doing it, become a better Christian or a worse one? Do the people that love your soul and love your walk with Jesus, are they encouraging you to do it? And those that don't love your soul and don't love your work with Jesus, are they discouraging you from doing it? Right. Now, it seems to me, from what you're saying to me, that you're definitely called to some kind of evangelism, but there's some question marks about whether it's exactly what I'm doing here in the park. Okay. Because you've raised question marks about your ability to do it, yep. and you've raised um, question marks about, you know, your, your counsellors saying, you know, why come to this place kind of thing yeah, yeah. you know so so you, you need more time to reflect on whether doing it here in the park is the kind of evangelism God is calling you to do yeah. but I think it's clear from everything you're saying that God is calling you to do some kind of evangelism yeah I feel so well yeah I mean I've prayed about it and I haven't had any reject like uh, I haven't had anything that seems to say no to me immediately yeah so. which means that you're definitely called to evangelize the, the question is, are you called to exactly this kind of evangelism? Okay. Because in, in the Christian faith, it's not one size fits all. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're not Islam. You, you, we, each of us have to discern and work out with fear and trembling our own walk with Jesus. So, and, and God knows we need more Christians doing evangelism in this park. We absolutely do. And I'm not saying that doing evangelism in this park is not what God is calling you to. It might very well be. 
but I think you need to do a bit more soul searching because one of the things that I would advise you and caution you is doing doing this kind of evangelism is going to affect your career. Yes, I've, I've thought long about this. I'm prepared to... And you're willing to accept that sacrifice? Yeah, yeah I can do that. Then that means that that's not an obstacle for you. The other thing about this kind of evangelism is that if you get good of it and, and, you, and you start really impacting particularly the Islamic community, there's going to be elements of the Islamic community that start getting aggressive with you and start getting, um, as we've seen with Hatun, you know, and, and that, that could be you. Yep. Are you willing to accept that sacrifice? Yeah. Um, so <laughs> my actual view on this, in all honesty, it's a bit out there, but I think it's if you're, if you're at that stage, you have something to be proud of because you've actually done something that is worth that happening to you, you're yeah. being affected. Yeah. You're being persecuted in such a, it, it's sort of like persecution is suffering, but it's suffering for Christ, and that is an honor. Yeah. To, to die to Christ is an honor. Amen. And, that's, and I think that's, that's yeah. how I actually see it. Yeah, um, and you're absolutely right. That, that is exactly what it is. To be a martyr for the Lord is an honor. Yeah. You know, so I, the, 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 the only kind of thing that I would leave you with is that there's no point being the fodder for the dawah cameras. Yeah. Yeah. So either say, either talk with Muslims off camera yeah. or insist that a Christian camera is present in any discussion. Oh, okay. But don't get, don't, don't just let them film it for their own sakes because yeah. they'll edit it yeah, amongst true. other things. True. You know, and they're like I said, they're only looking for fodder videos. So if you did do very well, like they do with me all the time, they'll edit chunks out of what you're saying. They'll miss out bits. Yeah. You know. So so that that, that that's my caution and okay, advice to you. Okay. So so the way I was thinking about it was, well, I might do really badly, but it will teach me what they're doing, what they're saying, and I can yeah. prepare next time. Just just you could do that. You could do that off, off camera. camera. Yeah, yeah, you could do that off-camera. But I, I, we certainly need Christians down here in the park who, when I'm debating and there's Muslims surrounding, we need Christians to, to mix in and to talk to yeah. Muslims and to take them away from the crowd. Yeah. Because in my experience, when you talk with a Muslim off-camera and away from their peers, their attitudes are very different. Yeah. They're much more open. Whereas when they've got their peers around them and when the camera's on them, they feel that they've got a front, they feel that they've got to put up a show, they feel they've got uh, yeah. they've got that honor code. It kicks in. Yeah, you, you know. Can see it. You can see yeah. It. So this, I hope that you found that useful. Yeah. And I hope it helps you in your discernment. And God willing, you know, you'll be here as an evangelist with us. Peace be with you. So this is this is from JC Soko Films. This is a, a, yeah. This brother's been following the channel for for two years. So you know. There you go, bro. Thank you. Would you like to help me do my next talk? Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah? yeah, yeah. Brilliant. I, I've got, I've got, can I have a conversation with you? Uh, off camera, though. Why does it have to be off camera? You're happy to be in front of the camera all the time. Yeah, exactly. But, but you're, you're in front of the camera all the time. But a lot of the time. So you're not camera shy. I want to talk about a, a contradiction inside Islamic theology. I'll give you an interview. Why? 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 Because I'm going to have to go um, help Ali in a minute, so I can't really get into the conversation. That's a shame. That's a shame. I'll, 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 I'll come and find you later then. I'll come and find you later. But, but do you, do, I'm just wondering, do you, do you think it's a bit embarrassing that the Dawah team are running from Christians like me in the park and they don't want to debate us anymore? Why is it why is it they want to debate? What's the reason behind it? I think, I think it's because every time, every time we have a debate with Muslims in the park, the, the knowledgeable Christians who are debating Muslims in the park, Islam comes off looking worse. And so Muslims now are uh, taking up the strategy of just avoiding the Christians and debating the Christians in the park. Mm. What are your thoughts? I mean, if you, if you stand for Islam and you, you think that's the truth, then you shouldn't avoid anyone. Yeah, I agree. You should stand your ground. Yeah. I don't know specifically why certain people, because there sometimes are certain people, they, want, they don't want to talk to you because they may have an issue with you personally. Like I can't really comment on that. Yeah. I, I had conversations with you. Yeah, yeah, totally, you totally. Talks. But, but when I when I invited you to debate on camera, you were hesitant to do yeah, so. Yeah, because I'm going to have to help Ali. He's going to come. Gonna have to what about later then? Possibly, yeah. Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. Actually, there's a couple of uh, things that you mentioned in the last video you did about the attributes of God. Yeah. There's a couple of things from Do you want to take up and, and talk about it some more? 
Yeah. Continuation from your previous discussion, basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is. It's along the same lines of the same pro the same problems. Do you remember the conversation? Yeah, about the attributes in terms of mercy, wasn't it? Was it mercy? No, no. It was to do with the chin of Allah. Oh, the chin of Allah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, No, well, I have so many conversations that are the same. Yeah, you know, that, that's my point. I have similar conversations. So what, what, I mean, by you having the same conversation over and over again, what do you sort of expect to gain from that? Do you expect to gain a breakthrough, maybe? Well, we are having breakthroughs. I mean, I know Muslims don't like to admit this, but there are Muslims leaving Islam and becoming Christians. Yeah, certainly. Certainly, certainly. Yeah, certainly. yeah you, you, act, you, act, you accept that as yeah, a fact. Of course. Of yes. Course. I mean, I've, I see them online. Yeah. Yes, people who... You meet them in the corner? Have you met any of them in the corner? I haven't met anyone yet personally coming out saying I've left Islam. I, I know a few. Yeah. I know a few. But there's a couple of people, of course, so that's going to yeah. happen. The same way there's Christians who become Muslims. You know? Well, I mean, the, the ones... Do you, do, do you, do you recognise that there's a difference between cultural Christians and actual disciples of Jesus? Uh, yes, sure. And, and do you recognise that Muslims often mistake those two categories and treat them as the same? Sure, but I think the fact is that the, the culture Christian identifies as Christian and that's sort of like his only gateway to religion was Christianity. You know, when he, when he looks to religion, he sees Christianity. So but many, many, it's just that many of the, the so-called Christians yeah. that have become Muslims, when you talk to them, they've never darkened the door of a church. True. And and so why are they being why are they being trumped as Christian converts to um, Islam if they've never even been to a fellowship? Because like Christianity, you're a purist in that sense. You you see Christianity as something where you actively practice it and you go yep. to church and you yep. engage with it, which I understand. Uh, similarly, Muslims would make the same argument. Well, he wasn't really a Muslim, or you know. Uh, but I would still, I mean. Whatever the person identifies with, you know, yeah. whatever the person identifies, I think we have to also look at the context because a lot of people, religion is not. Is that the boss? You gotta go. All right, peace for you, bro. Peace for you. Yeah. Anyway, it was good talking to you. You gonna help me with my next talk? Sure. Yeah. yeah.